Unexpected. Unknown life form. Let's be honest. Holograms are dope as shit. They're awesome and everyone knows it. You see them constantly in sci-fi films like Star Wars, Prometheus, Iron Man, Avatar, Vanilla Sky, and so on. And each of them have their own style. Some are more detailed like you see in Prometheus or Iron Man, and some are less detailed like you see in the earlier Star Wars films. But regardless of how they're used, we can all agree on one thing. They are, in fact, say it with me now, dope, dope as shit. Yes, that is right. They are dope as shit. So let's jump into how we did it. And actually, before we do, if you're not subscribed, please consider doing that. And if you are, make sure you hit that bell so you can be notified when we put up new goodies. Okay, now let's jump into it. The first thing that we made before we even shot the thing was an animatic. Of course, an animatic is just a moving storyboard. And although this little sequence is really simple, so we didn't really need to do it. If you do have the ability to do it, small things like building this out will help you dial it in a lot more and find ideas you wouldn't have otherwise. It's also just great practice. And for me, filmmaking really is all iteration. So if I can add another step to that, I'm a fan. And of course, it gave us a very clear list of what we needed, so we were able to shoot 10 times faster. And to shoot it, we used our Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 4K on top of our Edelkrone slider just to give it a bit of repeatable and smooth movement. Of course, we knew going in that we wanted our hologram to be bluish, so we were able to light with that in mind. And like we talked about plenty of times, one of the most important elements to gluing a VFX shot into your scene like this is how you light it, letting you connect the practical with the digital. Digital. So we used our Luxly RGB panels, shifted that color to what we wanted, and shaped the light, keeping it on Josh and off the walls, which let our background fall more into black. Now with it shot, we send it over to After Effects and we're gonna drop it into a new comp. Since this shot is from behind, we first need to Roto Josh so that we can place him in front of our hologram layer. For this, we opted to use Roto Brush. So first we're gonna duplicate our footage, double click on the layer and use the Roto Brush tool to draw on our subject. Once it's selected, you can draw more to add or hold down control and draw to subtract until you refine your shape. When you're happy, press play and let Roto Brush do its thing until the clip is complete. Now we can jump to the main comp and solo the layer to see our roto. Try messing with the values here to see if they help with your end result, such as boosting the feather. Since this is a moving shot, we're gonna have to track the motion. So first we're gonna create a new null layer, then right click your footage and under track and stabilize, we'll choose track motion. For this, we'll scale up and place the tracking area over the part of the table here. And we also don't need rotation or scale to track ours, but you might want to enable it depending on your shot. Now we're gonna play through and let it track. Once it's finished, we're gonna click edit target and make sure that the null layer is selected, then click apply X and Y. For the hologram, we're gonna be using Element 3D, so create a new solid and apply Element 3D. Element can work really well for holograms because it allows the option to show a 3D model in wireframe or point cloud mode. The more detailed your 3D model is, the denser the point cloud or wireframe shader becomes, so you could go super basic or really intricate depending on the style you're aiming for. Right now, this only shows inside of Element, so back in After Effects, you need to go to Output and choose between the polygon modes, which which also gives you control over the wire and point size. So for our scene, we chose to use this spaceship model since it gave a cool sci-fi feel and had a lot of detail for the point cloud shader, but they also offer a variety of free models to choose from. So if you don't wanna spend money, you can grab one of those. Now with any 3D model, you'll see a different amount of materials shown. It depends on the model itself and how it's broken up. Some models may only have one material. One of the things we found useful with these materials was to lower the diffuse value and change the blending mode to screen, which makes it hollow. Now back in After Effects, under group one, we can change the size, rotation, and position values to our liking for the hologram to fit our scene. To make it more visible, you can add a curves effect to boost the alpha and brightness channels. For color, we like to use Video Copilot's free Color Vibrance plugin, and in the case of our scene, we chose blue to match our set lighting. If you still have pale areas like we do here, you can also use a tint effect placed before the Color Vibrance effect, give it a similar color, and lower the amount to your liking. And the next key step is adding glow. For this, 
we're using After Effects built-in glow, duplicating it, then increasing the radius, duplicating again, increasing the radius even more, then finally, one last time with the radius at its maximum value. This is all just to eye though, so feel free to alter any value you like to get the result that you're happy with. Lastly, we used a hue and saturation with the hue dialed slightly to the right to try and match the lighting in our scene a bit closer. But now we can link our hologram to our track and place our roto layer above. And to give the hologram some motion, we're gonna keyframe the group one Y rotation. Then at the end of the timeline, we'll change the rotation value and set the first keyframe to easy ease so that it gradually starts to turn, which gives us this. Now, if you want your hologram to appear at the beginning like this, it's very easy to do. In Elements Render Settings, there are these camera cutoff, near and far options, which basically allow you to choose how much of your 3D model or scene is visible. So you can keyframe either of these to make it look like the hologram animates on. And lastly, for this shot, we're adding an adjustment layer for some glow overlapping Josh just by using a couple glow effects, again, with high radius values. And before we jump into this shot, we must pay our mother fucking bills. Why is this happening? I don't know. I kind of thought intrigue, you know, like people love drama. Oh, okay. I see what you're, I see what you're saying. Yeah? You no, like no, do the sponsor. Oh, f you, man. Today's episode is partnered by Music. No, no. It will be good. Just do it normal. Today's episode is partnered by Musicbed, and if you watch a show, you know who they are. By far, one of the best places to look for music for any project, and one that I've used constantly over the past six years, like this end moment in our project, Bar Brawl. I want you to go with me everywhere I go. Do everything I do. That's I really wanted to end that film with a totally different style than what we'd had, like this calming Frank Sinatra old school track. But that is crazy hard to find. And thankfully, Musicbed had the goods. And we actually used their music for the opening hologram scene in this episode too. And a massive amount of film right episodes overall, from shorts that we've done, sketches, to just general talking head stuff like this right here. They have pretty much everything that you could need with over 700 indie artists and composers to choose from. Not to mention their music is record label quality. So you're getting some of the best out there, including artists like Ryan Talbert, who composed for films like Kingsman, The Golden Circle, and King Arthur. So, you know, not bad. You can get unlimited access for your projects when you sign up. So whether you're making content for YouTube or are a freelancer or an in-house filmmaker or somewhere in between, there's really something here that's gonna work for you. So definitely check out the links below to find out more about Musicbed and a link to my playlist that has some of my favorite tracks. So do it or we're gonna have a serious- Right, no, no, stop, Ryan. Entry. So for this front shot, we filmed Josh quickly moving his hands as if he was interacting with a hologram all Tom Cruise-like to motivate the separation here. With our model, this was pretty easy to do, but it does depend on how many pieces your 3D model has. Like we mentioned before, it's indicated by the number of materials shown. If you have a model which is just one whole piece, but you wanna separate it, you could do that in a program such as Blender and break it up into multiple pieces before bringing it into Element. For ours, we're gonna go into group one, particle look, multi-object, and check the box to enable control over these individual parts of the model. Now you can see when changing different values, it allows you to break apart and spread the hologram, giving you different patterns to choose from. For this shot specifically, we keyframed various display and scatter properties on the frame where Josh is about to move his hands, then moved forward a few frames after he finished the movement and played around with the values. Again, there's no set rule for how this should look, just alter different settings until you find a layout that you're happy with. Changing the random seed also gives you further options of layout to choose from. To make the animation flow smoother, we easy eased all the keyframes, and if you go into the graph editor, you can select and squeeze or stretch the keyframes to alter their speed, so they will animate fast at the peak, then slowly transition to a stop. We also keyframed the Z rotation and had it last a bit longer than the other keyframes to give this spin effect. And lastly, we keyframed each of the group one size values and the group one Y and Z rotation to slowly continue throughout the 
shot so that the movement didn't come to a complete stop. To add more detail, we also had a duplicate of the hologram placed slightly higher and used the same camera cutoff technique from before to make it slowly appear. For this close-up, we used an After Effects camera with some simple keyframes to have the position slowly push forward and tilt up. We also used a duplicate hologram layer this time, just a few simple boxes and a color change to red with an animated brightness to give that pulsing on and off look. And of course, you can make your hologram any color by changing the color vibrance effect to give a variety of looks. Just remember to change the color of your footage or even better yet, do what we did and decide what color you want before you ever shoot anything at all. But that's it, and what's great about this technique is it translates to whatever you want to make a hologram of. There are so many ideas that you could take this with with very little limits to what you can do. And if you like the sound effects in our open, those sounds came from our sci-fi sound effects pack, which you can find on our store. Link for that below as well. And I tweeted this out before, but in case you didn't see it, my friend Josh Tanner released his latest short film called Decommissioned. It's a creepy sci-fi horror that he shot without any green screen. They actually use a similar idea to what we did did in another episode of Film Riot, but he took it to a much more epic place, doing a full-on virtual production. But since they didn't have an LED wall, they used a projector, and it worked incredibly well. So definitely check that out in the links below too. And until next time, don't forget to write, shoot, edit, repeat.